So let's just say hypothetically that you got lost uh, somewhere next to our galaxy and you need to get home somehow. How do you do it? Well, in this little challenge, I'm going to challenge myself to try to find our planet Earth, or at least our sun, by basically navigating across the galaxy and uh, using uh, objects that I'm familiar with to try to find our planet and also our sun. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so here we are, right next to our beautiful Milky Way galaxy. I know I just say you got kicked out by accident and now you have to get home because, I don't know, you forgot to turn off your oven or something and something is burning on the stove. How do we do it? Well, you're pretty much, I would say, screwed without a map, but we're going to figure this out using the locations and using the objects that we're familiar with from the previous videos and also obviously just from the general knowledge of a uh, star map if you actually look into the skies if you have a nap for it uh, you may actually know some of these objects i'm going to mention so there's a um, small and large magellanic clouds these are the uh, smaller galaxies right next to us actually and i'm going to position them in this way sort of i guess you could you would call this north but it's not really north i guess you could call it galactic north but not really and Somewhere in this vicinity is our beautiful planet Earth, but that's essentially something like 50 billion stars. I'm going to have to look through a lot of stars if I want to find home. We're going to slowly go and uh, look for objects we're familiar with. I'm going to actually decrease this a little bit. And the way I'm doing this is by using objects that are large and are easy to see and that you may actually see in the sky uh, if you look at them at night. Now, this video is going to be completely unedited. Because I want to, I want to show you that this is possible to do without essentially cheating, <laughs> without using the uh, map search function. And right now I'm approaching Carina Nebula. Carina Nebula is the largest nebula you can see in, in the sky. I've talked about this previously, and this is it. This is what I was looking for. It's a purple dot. But we want to find another nebula right next to Carina Nebula, known as you may have guessed, Orion's Nebula. Now Orion's Nebula has a tendency to not show up right away in the game until you find the three beautiful stars known as the Orion's Belt. And is that it? Of course that's it. There you go. There is the Orion's Belt. And there is the Orion Nebula itself. Once you find Orion's Nebula, you're actually already in the vicinity of home. Now, we just need to kind of analyze this quickly. Or not quickly, but uh, thoroughly. We're going to decrease the brightness a little bit and slowly step by step a step by step approach our home planet and to do this we need to find stars that are s closer and closer to home the first star that is kind of closer to us from orion's nebula is possibly this betelgeuse 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 three times that's right it's going to appear now <laughs> there we go it worked betelgeuse is about 470 ish light years away from us and we want to get to it because, first of all, it's a very large red supergiant. It's very, very easy to see in the sky. And it's close to Orion's Nebula, so it's easy to find. Once you find Betelgeuse, start looking for other familiar stars, specifically these bright objects. You may have already, uh, you know, found some of them and may already know how to get home from them. Um, I'm not as familiar with, with a lot of these. And maybe you are not either, but I'm going to look for the ones that I know are closer to us. Now, Betelgeuse is about 470 light years away. This is about 600 light years away, meaning that this is overshooting us a little bit. Uh, this right here is a little bit closer, but not close enough. Canopus is a good location to start. But I'm going to look for something even better. Let's see if we can find something good that is um, kind of famous, I guess. But at the same time will possibly take us a little bit closer to home. I'm only clicking on the bright ones for now because from this distance there's absolutely no way you'll be able to see the sun. Now Antares, uh, in the Antares Nebula, is actually a very good location to go to, but this is once again overshooting it a little bit, but you can uh, definitely look for things there. This is a planet, this is Betelgeuse 8, it shouldn't be here. Um, now let's see if I can find what I'm actually looking for and i'm looking for one of two things possibly aldebaran which is a very bright but also very close star to us or there you go that's a good this is a good location bilitrix it takes us about 190 light years closer to to our um our planet to our star and also allows us to see other objects a little bit more clear now using bilitrix i'm going to try to locate um 
something else that is relatively bright. Oh, there we go, Aldebaran, look at that. So see how bright it is compared to everything else? This is actually with decreased brightness, this is what it actually looks like. Um, orange Giant, so it's a binary Orange Giant, his two stars, one is a, obviously Orange Giant and one is a Red Dwarf. I believe it's a Red Dwarf, yes it is, I was right. And so from here, we're only within like 90-ish light years away. This is basically our home, practically. Now, here's one thing you can do. Now, it's actually very hard to see sun from here. It's still very, very dim. It's going to be as dim as some of these stars right here. If I click on this, this is essentially how dim the sun would be. You can obviously start... Oh, wait. Is that it? No, that's not it. Are you serious? Is that actually it? No way. <laughs> that was completely by accident. Oh, okay. Well, that's not fun. I found it. Yay. What I was going to show you is this. From here, the easiest way is to find the Antares Nebula. It may actually show up and it may not load correctly, but if you click on it, it will show up right away. And start uh, moving toward it until you start seeing other stars. Now, right here you should see Sirius, and right here you should see uh, Procyon, and you may also see um, Alpha Centauri. Is that it? Let me, do, let me guess that. Yeah, there you go, Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centauri is the closest star to us. And as soon as you get to Alpha Centauri, look for, obviously, an orange star, which is right there. You can see it moving right here. And this orange star is home, solar system. Now, that's, you know, halfway home already. And then comes the easy part. Going to zoom out of here, obviously, and look for the third planet from the sun. And here's our home. And now you can just land wherever you left your oven on and basically go and turn it off. And so essentially, this is how you can kind of, you know, use your knowledge of space and your understanding of, of, you know, star maps and star systems to try to locate where you actually are in this beautiful galaxy Milky Way. Anyway, I hope you learned something from this video and I hope you try this yourself because it's kind of fun. It's actually one of the coolest challenges that you can do in Space Engine. And if you can do uh, this from farther away from another galaxy, then you definitely are better than, than me, for sure. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Game later and as always, bye-bye. And if you actually would like to support this channel on Patreon, I'm providing the link for this in the description below. This definitely helps my channel grow because I can actually buy better equipment and make better, longer, and more beautiful videos. Thank you guys for all of you, uh, to all of you that actually supported my channel on Patreon already. I really, really appreciate it. See you later. Bye-bye.